y'all, it's Siobhan Mir. Welcome back. Today we're going to make, it's the start of the holiday season. Well, no, it's the start of the winter holiday season. There's already been holidays in the fall, but now we're doing the winter holidays and we're going to make a very traditional cookie. It's, it will be gluten-free for those of you worried that I might be going back off the rails, <laughs> but we are doing what's called, what I grew up with was called the Russian tea cake. Okay, I've also heard it as Mexican wedding cookies and Italian wedding cookies and all sorts of things. But in my family, we called it the Russian tea cakes. And basically they're shortbread balls with little nuts in them and you roll them in powdered sugar. That's what they are. It's very simple, it's very easy to make. And because I'm using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten free baking flour, they'll be gluten free and they will work oftentimes. That's not the case how it works. All right, so what are you going to need? Well, gather your stuff. Because what you're going to need is one cup of butter, or as they say, two sticks in the US. Um, a half a cup of powdered sugar, which is called confectioner's, confectioner's sugar as well. Um, two and a quarter cup of flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla, and three quarters cup cho chopped walnuts. So what do you need to do? You need to cream the butter and sugar together. So we need um, a half a cup of powdered sugar. Uh, I think we'll just use a spoon. Good, that saves me some money. <laughs> it does. Would you like one of the new ones or one of the long ones? Uh, The well, first one you got. Okay. Technically, these are your baking spoons. The new ones are my dad's cooking, cooking spoons. Cooking spoons, yeah. All right. We are going to need this again later, but yeah. Anyway, so what you're going to do, and you can do this with a, I think you can do it with a hand mixer. Yeah. Might be, might be faster with a hand mixer, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to mix this together and you're going to cream it so it's soft. and. You just want to make sure that the, you also don't want the, the powdered sugar to go poof. You don't want that either. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to cream the butter and sugar until it's pretty smooth. It actually looks kind of opalescent. When you it do does. This. How does it smell? Like butter and sugar. Does it smell more sweet or? No. No, you're right. It still smells like butter. It smells like butter and sugar. But it should, it should just kind of look like that. It's just creamed butter and sugar. Okay. Once you do that, then you're going to add the flour and the salt to this. So I'm going to do the salt first. Okay. And you need a half a teaspoon of that. No. Oh, almost booby hatched myself. Quarter teaspoon. Yes, quarter teaspoon. Make sure to read the recipe correctly. <laughs> Otherwise you're gonna be like, this doesn't, this doesn't taste right. <coughs> what, a what a teaspoon of salt. Quota, you need a quota. All right. All right, Ta -da. quarter teaspoon of salt. Mix that into. also one of my grandmother's recipes where she just basically said put it together and, and it'll be fine <laughs> she doesn't give you much much uh do this add that mix well go ahead good luck <laughs> exactly yeah i love the her scalloped corn recipe yeah That's that was my good. favorite <laughs> add flour and salt to the butter mixture see so, add flour and salt to the butter mixture. so we need a um, two and a quarter. So I'm just gonna start with a quarter, and then you can add this to the other bag. I <laughs> will have to open the other bag. I'll start with that one. Poof. Just in case you need it. The, oh yeah, I'm gonna need it, but I was like, please don't let me add this to that. I make a mess every time. No, I was gonna say, get as much of this into this, and then. 
In the meantime, I'm going to mix the, the current amount of flour into the butter and sugar and salt. Put another one in there. Nice. It's highly satis satisfactory. Satisfying. It's really satisfying to do that. Oh gosh, what'd you say now? Add vanilla. I would have added the vanilla to the butter. Yeah. That's all right. My grandmother, like I said, if I was doing this without using her recipe, I would add the vanilla to the butter because then you can get it dispersed better and then you add the flour. But we're following my grandmother's recipe and I don't think she thought logically about this. Her cookies turned out just fine, though. All right. It's like I said, it's really satisfying to do that. <laughs> hand is you can do it slowly yeah and you don't have large explosions of powder yeah but it's so fun like that why'd you do that that's right see this is now they're saying add the vanilla now i would have done it with the butter what do all the the wet ingredients together i don't understand you don't <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh the look she gave me was <laughs> I'm pretty good at deadpanning, you know how I, that is? Are you making noises back there? No nope. faces? Nope. Nope, not at all. I have my great deadpanning skills are present because I learned from the deadpan master. Anymore. We do not. We do not. Okay, your dough is going to be kind of chunky and dry. It's supposed to be because you're going to end up um, rolling them into cookies. But Now, granted, the reason why most people put walnuts in these things is because it, it, it adds, not only does it add a crunch, a little bit of flavor, but it also adds kind of a different look. As you can see with pine nuts, they're almost the exact same color as the, as the dough. So you're not going to get any contrast here, but it will get a little bit of flavor and a little bit of crunch. Which really is all that matters. <laughs> yes, it really is all that matters. But that's right, walnuts are a little darker, aren't they? They're a little darker, and so that you can tell that you've actually put nuts in here. <laughs> Mine do not look like they've put nuts in here, but they have. They'll be sweet surprises when you're... I was going to say, when you crunch on them, it'll be obvious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we have nuts in here. Yep. Ding. So, once you've got everything mixed in, and you can see there are some pine nuts in here. But once you've got everything mixed in, kind of into a big old ball, you're going to put this in the refrigerator for, um, for two hours. You want the dough to be pretty um, hard. Um, no, I can put it, we can put it in a smaller container. So make sure there's enough room for a smaller container. Um, yeah. Because um, what you're going to do is you're going to put this in a container, cover it, I think it's this cover, no, why would she say that? It says chill for at least two hours. And because you want the thing, um, although technically I could probably make these right now, given how solid this is, but I think it adds some properties to the to the cookie that when you chill it and, and then you roll it into a ball. Um, then what we're going to do is we'll roll the into um, balls. It says one inch balls and it says, it doesn't tell you how many. Oh, I love grandmother. my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do this, add that, go ahead. When, when we come back and when it's been chilled for two hours, what we're going to do is roll them into 
it says one inch balls, but they usually end up being one and a half inches. It's just the way it works. Um, and you're going to end up baking them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius for about 15 minutes. Now, we'll do that. We'll show you when we come back. But um, until then, we'll see you later. All right, so um, we let this chill for a little while. And what we discovered is that it, when, it, when you use the gluten-free stuff, you only need to chill it for about a half an hour because it was pretty solid going in and you don't want it to be a rock. <laughs> Otherwise, Ask us how we know. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to break this stuff apart and you're going to take a little at a time and squeeze it into a, and then roll it into a ball. Oh, but don't break it apart. The thing about the gluten-free is it's a little less elastic than the, um, than the regular cookies. Okay, so basically what you're going to spend time doing is just rolling them into balls. And they can be anywhere from this size to this size. It doesn't matter. Um, they don't expand much when you cook them, so don't worry if they're too close together. Um, they won't expand a lot. Don't forget to set your temperature uh, at 360, 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. Okay, so once you've, you've rolled them into, you know, balls about this big, then you put them in the oven for about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on, you know, check them at 12 is my recommendation, especially if you're making the gluten-free version. Check them at 12 and, um, then you pull them out and you let them cool for uh, four or five minutes so they don't burn your hands because you're going to roll them in powdered sugar and they have to be hot when you do it. So first do like 12 to 15 minutes to bake them and then we'll show you rolling them out. All right, so once you take them out of the, out of the, the oven, you want them to sit for a little while because they're going to be really hot, but you still want them to be really warm when you roll them in, ooh, in powdered sugar. Because they want to look, they basically need to look like sugary snowballs. That's really what you're going for. See, some of them are just really docile. And others are like, no! Just cut this one in half. It's fine. Oh, these are terrible. Y'all aren't gonna like them. Not at all. I don't have to share, do I? This is basically what Mexican wedding cookies, Russian tea cakes, Italian wedding cookies, this is what they look like. They're balls of yummy shortbread goodness with nuts and powdered sugar. That's very simple. The neat thing about this one also is this was gluten-free and it, it's the exact same style of, of cookie. Um, when you do them with just regular flour, these are the, they, you do them hotter and then they kind of get gooey. But they're not like that with these ones, which I really appreciate. I actually like these better. So, but they taste really good. Wanna try one? Yes. Thank you. They're a little crumbly. <laughs> what do you think though? They're good? All right, even with the pine nuts? These are shortbread balls of goodness and they are a holiday favorite. They, yeah, my grandmother would make this recipe and I would only eat the one, you know, she put them on this cookie tree, right? And I'd only eat those because they were my favorites. I'm supposed to share though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, the one that's you it. have to fight off is me. <laughs> Not when it comes to hanger. 
<laughs> so that's it. That's a very simple recipe. It's very easy to do. Um, it's just a little bit time consuming because you do have to let them chill for a little bit. I would, with gluten free, I would chill them for about a half an hour. Otherwise the dough gets too hard and then you can't manipulate it. Depends on if you want to break or not. So all you have to do is put together the recipes and then bake them and then you're good to go. Do not, do not forget that you do need to roll them while they're still warm. That otherwise the sugar will not stick. But anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Please ring the bell to know new videos when they come out. Like the video and leave us a comment so we know what's going on. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can find more of these delicious balls of goodness. So <laughs> thanks for joining us. Happy making, happy baking, happy eating, and happy reading. Bye.